Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this is going to be about the brush panel in Photoshop CC 2018. As of the 2018 release, the brush panel has changed completely. In fact, it's been one of the best changes in Photoshop for a long time. They've not really sang about it just yet, but believe me, if you use brushes, it's changed completely. Now, this is not about the brush settings. That's different. This is about the brush panel and I will explain more later. So let's go to preferences and show you a few things. So command or control, depending on what system, command on a Mac, control on a PC, K preferences. I'm not clicked on it. There you go, guys. Right. There you go. So under cursors, we won't go into anything else, but show brush leash while smoothing or should be while smoothing and you can change the color. We'll get to this smoothing in a minute. This is being a, uh, like a settings change, but it only appears on the options bar. It's not in the brush settings. So it is a change that CC 2018 has brought about, but um, it's not in the brush settings, so I will explain it. But anyway, it, it's there in preferences, and I believe it's ticked by default. So okay on that. Right, we're in the brush tool. I can see I've got the normal brush symbol showing up. Uh, I'd like for that to disappear soon, but at the moment it's a bit of fun, but it's a bit annoying. Uh, the pencil tool and the color replacement tool, make sure you're not any of them, you are on the brush tool. This is the option bar. This is the old tool presets where we used to st store our brushes. We no longer store brushes in the tool presets. Now, as I'm on a brush and I go on the new icon there, I'll come here and go new tool preset. What it will say is, would you like to create a brush preset instead, question mark. We recommend doing so because brush presets now contain all the functionality of tool presets, but with additional benefits such as stroke previews and the ability to organize into folders. There's a link you can go about and learn about brush presets, or you can click don't show again, but I'm going to create a new brush preset and press yes. You can see, now I can rename it, I can capture the size in the preset. I have the choice. That size is always captured. That's what that 80 is there for. That's what that 164 is there for. That's what that 25 is. That is the size in pixels. It's not a number in a list that people often think it is. It's the size in pixels. So you have the choice to capture that or not now. You can include the tool settings. So if I press F5 on my keyboard or go to Window, brush settings, it brings up the brush settings panel, which is different to the brush panel. I'm not dealing with the brush settings panel because that hasn't changed at all, but I will do it in another video, but it's not for today. So it will save all those settings there. And I believe some of these ones here, like the blend mode, etc. Let's get rid of that because we don't need that anymore. But anyway, it will save that. And I believe it might even save opacity and flow, etc. I'm not 100% sure. It seems to, to change the blend mode. Uh, Adobe haven't brought out a lot of literature on this at the moment. It just says, um, you know, there's, there's a new way of organizing the brushes. It hasn't gone into great detail. But I believe including tool settings means all that there and all this here but I'll, I have to experiment further and see. I'm sure this is going to be refined as we go forward. Adobe are going to make changes to it, but that's what you can do now. But also, really importantly, if you use the color with that brush, you can now save it. This is a major change. The brush panel, the way we organized brushes before, was absolutely appalling. It really let Adobe down. You had to load a brush in, then if you didn't save it and reset all your brushes, you would lo lose that brush that you loaded in. But now you import them, you don't load them, and they're there for good until you decide to get rid of them. That's really important. But you can include the color you used. Now think of that because if you've done something two years ago and you can't remember what color you used and you might have to sample it from another photograph, let's say, it, you know, you might not be picking the right color. So this is really important. This is a game changer as far as I'm concerned. So I could go OK and create a brush. We don't need to see that anymore. The tool presets are not used for the brushes. They are used for the other tools. Don't forget the brush tool appears in a lot of other places. It appears in the clone stamp tool, in the smudge tool, the burn tool, and the dodge tool, etc. And more. But anyway, you can click or bring the brush panels up by clicking here. You can right click on the screen or you can come across and have your brush panel here. 
Personally, that would mean you have to make it a lot larger and you're losing screen real estate. So I prefer um, to come up here or right click on the screen. Let's come up here. Now, size hardness, we know about them. Right, on the cog here, new brush preset. Now, we just done that so we could create a preset. So I won't do that here. We can also use that symbol there as well. But we can create a new brush group, rename a brush, delete a brush. This dictates how that information is shown there. If you untick it or get rid of the name. So it's pretty obvious what you, is what's happening. Brush stroke, you get rid of the stroke, you're left with just the tip. So you can't untick all three. You've got to have one of them ticked. So I just say tick all three. Show additional preset info. I really love this. You can see that brush is being used in the, with the brush tool, but it could also have, you know, a brush that's associated with the eraser tool there. There's one there for the smudge tool. And also it saves the color. So as I said, this is really important. So that dictates, you know, that there dictates that information. So if I untick it, I lose the brush symbol, or whatever symbol it is, and the color I use. So why not have it ticked? It makes life a lot easier. Show recent brushes, that's those brushes there. So there's seven, I believe you can save. So untick that, you lose those brushes. Can't see for a reason to untick it, so I leave it on. Preset Manager is the, the preset manager that's uh, available for the other tools. You no longer need it for the brushes. You can create a new group. You can load in. We now import brushes. This is important. So don't use it. Just go done. Not as far as the brushes go anyway. Let's click again onto the cog. We can restore the default brushes. So if you did that and restore the default brushes, because you can delete them, you can bring them back. You can import brushes. This is really important. It's not loading anymore. It's importing like you would on a normal system. Because as I said, if you loaded, you had to save the brush. If you didn't save the brush and did a reset, you used to lose that brush. It's now up to you to delete it. So you have to manage your brushes, but it's more like using a Windows Explorer or Finder on a Mac. You can just drag stuff around. It's much more logical. If I import a brush, I've got um, one in my downloads folder, I think at the moment, there it's there. If I double click on that, it's .abr by the way, there's tons of brushes out there to be had. Go to brush easy, double, it's double E-Z or Z-Y, brusheasy.com or DeviantArt and people give away their brushes for free and you can really experiment with brushes. Uh, I love playing around with brushes, but you know, if even if you're a photographer, it's nice to have a play now and then um, doing something artistic. Anyway, I'm digressing. I've imported brushes, export selected brushes. I can also export a brush, give it a name, .abr, which stands for Adobe Brush. So that could be handy if you want to hand a brush over to someone. Um, get more brushes. This will take us out to adobe.com to a link to Kyle T. Webster, who is an artist, a great artist, who's created his own brushes and you can download them for free. I've downloaded the mega pack, I've got them there. And they're great to play with, their spatter brushes are fantastic. So, you know, why not download them if you don't like some, just delete them. So back to Photoshop, back to the brush tool, back to the cog. So converted legacy tool presets. Now, if you had some tool presets with brushes in them, you can convert them to brush presets. Legacy brushes, if you click on that, it'll bring back your legacy brushes that you're used to seeing. So you have to bring them back yourself. And I've actually done it twice and duplicated some, but they will be under converted legacy tool preset. If you should remember, or you can remember, things like DP brushes and brushes, they're all back there. But now, you know, you have to bring them back. So the general brushes you've got are quite few. And I believe what Adobe are trying to do is trying to get you to download brushes from them directly. And you might have to pay for them. They might be part of a plan. Brushes are normally very cheap, even premium brushes. Most brushes are free. Most artists give away their brushes. Um, it's a market. I don't believe they're trying to corner the market. What I think Adobe are trying to do is bring in more digital artists. I mean, a lot of them currently use Corel, C-O-R-E-L, draw and paint. And they're trying to bring them in by making the brushes much simpler to use because they weren't in the past. Anyway, that's that. That really has covered the changes in 2018. Now you can move brushes around and move them into different groups, rename stuff. So it's just like using Windows Explorer or Finder on a Mac. It's so simple now.
The only other change is in the options bar here, and that's smoothing. So let's find a decent brush, like a hard round brush to show this. Now, a uh, top tip, Control or Command A, select the whole layer, keep it selected, and just go backspace and you delete it. And if you, you're keeping also, you're keeping the marching ants there so you can just delete stuff as you go along. So if I put the smoothing up to 100%, it has got a keyboard shortcut of Alt or Option, then a number. So Alt or Option, um, Alt or Option 0 will be 100%. So that's 100% smoothing. Let's try and show it to you. Now, as I'm dragging, you'll see in that crosshair a little um, leash. And that's what that leash is all about. And it's smoothing off my pen stroke. So it's it's making it more geometric. So if I want to do a square, it's making it more easier to do. I'm making a huge brush size here, but I did like delete that down. If I make the brush size smaller by using the square bracket keys, the left one to make it smaller, you can probably see more what I'm doing like this. So you can drag it around like that. Now it's great for following things. And it smooths off the path so it doesn't look too jagged. Now there are options to this. Uh, one's called pull string mode. I'll click on that now and it un unticks those. Uh, adjust for zoom makes sense to keep that ticked. If I backspace now, get rid of it, this is the pull string mode. You can see, I'm on 400% zoom at the moment, but you can see that circle there. And as you pull along, it's pulling that around. So if you want to follow something, it, you know, it, it's a way of doing it. Um, I've yet to see practical uses for it. I often use the pen tool and stroke it myself, so um, it might be not so useful for me, but it saves me going to the pen tool. Um, I, I'd like to see more videos of people actually using this and making it, uh, or using it for practical purposes. That's what smoothing does. Um, Alt is the, or options, the keyboard shortcut with a number, but if you go Alt zero, it obviously keeps it 100%, but if you go Alt zero twice, it turns it back to 0%. And, they are the options with it. That is smoothing, so it's smoothing off your strokes. And if you're drawing geometrically, or you know, um, it will probably help you be a lot smoother. I use a Wacom tablet. I'm currently using a mouse. I've used it with a Wacom tablet, and it does really help if you're tracing things, etc. But mm, what I'm used to doing is shift and then click, sh shift clicking somewhere else, and I find that's pretty good still at the moment. But you know, they're going to refine it. They're probably going to make it better. So that's the changes to the brush panel in 2018. The brush settings I'm going to cover with the brush options here. I'm going to go to the technical side of the brushes because that will take a good 35 minutes, to be honest with you, to explain what's going on. So that's going to be my next video. But that's it for 2018, guys, with the brush panel. I hope you got something from this. Thank you very much.